YouTubers, good morning to you. It's 14 Cookie 45 LC coming to you from the hot lead zone. And we got our cup of coffee, and today we're going to talk about a book on the Revolutionary War. Now, that's a war that we don't give a whole lot of thought about. So, what Todd Andrelick did in this work was to use the newspapers of the time to bring out the incidences that were part of the war through the eyes of reporters and the people of the time. And he did this instead of using major incidences and personalities as we've learned in the history books. So here is Todd Andrelick's basic vehicle for this book. Before it was history, it was news. Well, if you think about it, in those days, there was no media communications like we have today. No TV, no radio, no internet, no instant reporting like through tweet or social media. What they had in those days was newspapers. The newspapers came into the American colonies back in 1704 and that's how the people got their news, through the newspapers of the time. And sometimes it took as much as four to six weeks before horseback would bring the news and the newspapers would be read in taverns that people would gather to get the latest news. Now the happenings of the war were, are broken down in a complete table of contents. So that all the happenings of the Revolutionary War are brought out that we can look up now, a very interesting perspective is that British newspapers are also included in this work. So you could see the happenings of the war and the, and the colonies from the eyes of the British people also. So what Todd Angela did was actually display the newspaper article that support the concise excerpt that Todd is bringing out, and in this case, is about the Boston Tea Party. And one of the things it brings out is that the Boston Tea Party caused pollution of Boston Harbor, which affected the fishing industry. Now, a very interesting article in the book talks about the British policy to control the colonists' powder and shot, and not only that, but cannon, because they wanted to quell the uprising and right there it says that reported in the New Hampshire Gazette how the British were disabling and removing batteries of cannon in Boston Harbor and then what happened was the New Englanders responded by spiriting all the other cannon into the countryside beyond the governor's reach so that the preservation of cannon was instrumental in the ultimate victory in the Revolutionary War. Now included in the in the treatise on the Declaration of Independence is this very interesting excerpt on the people of Manhattan tearing down the statue of George III and using the brass and bronze and lead to cast musket balls. Bullet casting in the Revolutionary War newspapers from the London Chronicle describing how the Londoners were being told about the first civil war in America and that is after the colonists were declaring their independence some of the colonists sided with the British and some of the Native Americans sided with the British causing a civil war in America that was actually quite vicious as the war progressed, there actually came a time in the British newspapers where the growing sense in British circles that the efforts to crush the rebellion were doomed. And it talks about the change in British strategy to attack the southern colonies, knowing that the war in the north was not going well. When you read this book, you can't help but be impressed by the fact that every area back on the east coast of our country is filled with history such as 
when Washington took charge of the colonial forces in Cambridge, Massachusetts, right there in Boston. And even places like Williamsburg and all areas are filled with historical happenings of the Revolutionary War. So this book is definitely interesting and different from what we normally see in history. YouTubers out there, have a nice day. We'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.